Hello, Crystal. I'm sorry to just drop in. Uh, but what are we doing today? Today I have a real treat for you. We're talking about desalination. Desalination? What's that? Desalination is the process of turning salty water into drinkable fresh water. Well, let's get started, Bob. I have a swimming lesson with Dust and the Dolphin soon. We all know how important water is. Well, I've always thought so. Crystal. Okay, sorry. Have you tried drinking salt water? Ooh, yuck. Not very tasty, is it? Desalination is the process of turning salty water into fresh drinking water. The vast majority of the Earth's water resource, 97% in fact, is salty water, found mainly in our oceans. Wow, that's a lot of water. Did you know I'm related to every one of those drops? OK. Most of the world's fresh water is frozen in glaciers and ice caps, meaning less than 1% of all of the world's water is fresh water available for our consumption. The oceans are certainly huge, but I had never considered how much of the fresh water is unavailable to us. Well, that's right, Crystal. And fresh water is essential for life on our planet. The Earth is a closed system, which means the water we have is all there is, and we're not getting any more. But what we can do is quite impressive. Whoa, but is there enough fresh water to go around? The simple answer is yes. If you look at the whole planet, the problem is the fresh water is not always where it needs to be. OK, so how much water do we use? On average, Australians use around 200 litres of water each day. So that's equal to 20 buckets of water each day. That's a lot. You may also be surprised how much water is needed to produce everyday items we need and take for granted. For example, it takes 570 litres of water to produce a single loaf of bread. And by the time we've grown the grain, made the flour, collected all the other ingredients and so on. An average size cotton t-shirt will need 2,700 litres of water. And one kilogram of beef requires 13,000 litres of water to produce. You really do need water for almost everything. It's pretty important, isn't it? Certainly. And in a country like Australia, there are particular issues. We're the driest inhabited continent on Earth. Our population is increasing, with the looming effects of climate change, extreme weather conditions like droughts and floods, water supplies become unpredictable. That's why it's important to look at other ways of creating fresh water, like desalination. With so much seawater around, it does make a lot of sense to turn it into fresh water, so everyone can use it, and so we're not so dependent on rain. Well, more than 50 years ago, in 1961, the President of the United States, John F. Kennedy, thought so. He saw incredible benefits to humankind in desalinating water on a large scale. I've said that I thought that if we could ever competitively, at a cheap rate, get fresh water from salt water, that it would be in the long range uh, interests of humanity, which would really dwarf any other scientific accomplishment. So how do you take fresh water from salty water? Taking fresh water from salty water is called desalination, and we've come a long way since President Kennedy's vision in 1961. There are more than 15,000 desalination plants worldwide, delivering fresh water to 300 million people in over 150 nations. Australia has been involved in this process since 1968. Australia's capital cities already have large seawater desalination plants as part of their water security strategy, with more to come. Additionally, over a thousand smaller desalination plants are spread all over the country. There are two main ways of desalinating water, distillation and reverse osmosis. In a distillation plant, salty water is heated until it boils. Then the water vapour is cooled, resulting in fresh water. Worldwide, 40% of the large desalination plants use this method. Boy, it must get hot in there. Phew! Distillation uses greater amounts of energy than reverse osmosis. The world's big distillation plants are in the Middle East, where energy costs are lower. The method we use here in Australia is reverse osmosis. This is the process you'll be going through, Crystal, 
to become fresh water. Let's run through how a state-of-the-art desalination plant works. Seawater is brought into the plant from the ocean through special intake structures which are carefully designed to take in seawater without affecting the surrounding marine environment. Once the seawater reaches the plant, the first step is the pre-treatment which filters out small particles which might block the reverse osmosis membranes. Still salty, the water is now pumped under very high pressure through several reverse osmosis or RO membranes. Membranes are not sieves with tiny holes, rather the membrane works like a massive artificial kidney, drawing water out of the passing salty stream. It's really the natural osmotic process in reverse. The membranes are located inside a pressure vessel. A big desalination plant has racks and racks of these pressure vessels grouped into what are called trains. The membranes allow desalinated water to reach a tube in the centre of the pressure vessel. This results in two streams, a desalinated or freshwater stream and a concentrated stream. <laughs> that tickles! The concentrated stream contains all the salt removed from the desalinated stream. The desalinated water goes through a final post-treatment process to prepare it for joining the water supply. You and the rest of the water are now fresh to drink. Ah, much better. Very refreshing. But what happens to the salt that was in the water to begin with? The RO process extracts around half of the original feed water as desalinated water, or permeate. The leftover water is now twice as salty as the original seawater, and it's called concentrate. The concentrate is then pumped back out to sea through a carefully designed outfall and diffuser system. So does the extra salt affect my fishy friends? Like Dustin the Dolphin? The average concentration of salt in the ocean is 3.5%. When the concentrate from a desalination plant is returned to the sea, it has twice as much salt at around 7%. The concentrate goes through a special diffuser system that ensures each litre of concentrate is mixed with around 30 litres of seawater, so it very quickly returns to normal. In addition, the ocean tides and currents mix the water from the diffusers, ensuring there's no build-up in salt concentration over time. Constant monitoring by highly qualified staff is carried out. Well, that's good. I'm glad my friends and Dustin are safe. But does it take a lot of energy to remove the salt? In a desalination plant, most of the power is used by the high pressure pumps as they push the water through the membranes in the high pressure vessels. However, modern facilities use energy recovery devices that extract for reuse more than 50% of the original energy investment. For our big Australian seawater desalination plants, Renewable electricity is bought from renewable energy sources, such as wind farms and solar fields, to help offset the plant's carbon footprint. You might be surprised when we compare the total amount of energy used by a large desalination plant with other energy uses. For example, if all the water used in a typical Australian family home came from desalination, the energy needed each day to make that water would be similar to the energy used to run the large family fridge. Or if we produce desalinated water for around 850,000 people, it would require the same energy as is used by a single cruising jumbo jet. OK, I get it. Very good, Crystal. Desalination is an affordable and sustainable freshwater source and will ensure we always have enough water in times of extreme weather conditions, when climate patterns change and as the population grows. Thank you for joining us on our journey today. I hope you now have a clearer understanding of desalination and what it means for us now and into the future. That is, and I am, crystal clear.